Okay, um, good afternoon everyone and uh, welcome to this session uh, for the uh, IT programs offered by the University of Wollongong. Uh, we are very happy today to have with us uh, two special guests, uh, Associate Professor Casey Chow, who is the uh, Deputy Head of School as well as the Academic Program Director for the Computer Science Programs, as well as Associate Professor Jun Yen, who is the Academic Program for our BBIS programs here at SIM. Uh, my name is Celine. I'm the program manager here, and uh, together we will be uh, co-presenting this session. Uh, we have a uh, alumni that would also be uh, sharing, doing some sharing after the presentation, and I'll probably introduce him later when he actually joins us. So, uh, without further ado, let me invite uh, Casey to actually start off. Yeah, Casey, please. Thank you. So, good afternoon, everybody, and a uh, very good. Um... So welcome to this uh, information session um, from the University of Wollongong. So as uh, Salim mentioned, uh, my name is uh, Casey Chow and uh, I'll be running this presentation with you. So first and foremost, let me start off with an introduction to uh, where the University of Wollongong is actually located because uh, we usually get questions of you know, where, where is Wollongong uh, located in Australia. Now, Wollongong is basically located south of Sydney. So it's in the state of New South Wales, south of Sydney. It's approximately one and a half hours south of Sydney. So if you drive by car, it's about one and a half hours. And as you can see from this uh, picture here, it's a, it's a coastal uh, city. So there's a lot of uh, really nice beaches um, in, 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 in the Wollongong area. Uh, temperature is very really nice. It's, uh, uh, it's moving into uh, from... from uh, moving into winter now, but uh, winters are not uh, as cold as other uh, states in Australia. So that, that's a brief uh, summary of uh, where the university is located. Now, in terms of where uh, our achievements, now, we, we, uh, the University of Wollongong is very really proud of a number of uh, things that we do well. Uh, for one thing, we are among uh, the top in terms of uh, teaching and research uh, in Australia, as ranked by uh, the good university's uh, teaching and learning guide. Uh, we are rated as five-star uh, uh, teaching and research university in the world as well. And we are in the top 2% of universities in the world as ranked by uh, the QS uh, ranking and, and, and Times uh, ranking. Um, now, in terms of, uh, in comparison with the, the modern universities in the world, because of the fact that um, the older the university is, then the longer the university has a chance to build a reputation. So. The University of Wollongong is actually in uh, the top 20 uh, of, of the best modern universities and we are actually ranked number 17 uh, in terms of the, uh, the, the best modern universities in the world. Um, now most of our graduates uh, get a job within the first four months uh, of, of uh, their graduation. So about 73% uh, that, that's across uh, all our campuses and uh, it's, it's higher in uh, Singapore. And uh, all, all the university's achievements are uh, recognized by a number of uh, industries in Singapore. For example, uh, the uh, Infocom Media Development Authority, uh, which is part of uh, Singapore government organization. And uh, in terms of the recognition, you'll find that um, uh, every year uh, during graduation ceremony, they actually have a number of awards for our top graduates. Uh, the same uh, applies to CSIT, the Center of Strategic Infocom uh, Technologies, which again is a government, Singapore government organization. And one of the things that they actually recognize is that um, uh, they actually offer uh, scholarships to some students. So for example, if you go to the, um, uh, strategic, uh, the Center of Strategic Infocom Technologies, you'll find on their website that they list um, a number of universities where they actually list uh, uh, where, where students can actually apply for scholarships. And you'll find that all the other universities listed um, on their website are um, Singapore universities. Whereas the only university that is not a Singapore university is actually the University of Wollongong. And um, you'll find that, uh, so, so in, in our degree, um, you, you will also have a chance to do a final year project. And um, there are some internship placements that students can actually apply for at uh, CSIT uh, to do your internship um, at, at, at that uh, uh, center. Uh, we also have a number of research collaborations with a number of Singapore uh, institutes, for example, uh, I2R, which is a uh, part of ASTAR. So 
Uh, some of you would know that that's a very prominent uh, Singapore Research Institute. So we have a lot of collab collaboration with them. Um, now, in terms of uh, professional recognition, now our, our degrees are all uh, professionally accredited by the Australian uh, Computer Society. And uh, the Australian Computer Society, or ACS, is part of uh, what's known as the sole accord. And what that actually means is that um, as long as our degrees are accredited by ACS, then uh, the sole accord basically has reciprocal agreements around the world with other uh, computing societies. So for example, uh, in Singapore, uh, the Singapore Computer Society, what it basically means is that um, because ACS accredits our degrees as professional, the Singapore Computer Society also uh, recognizes uh, that as well. And as you can see, a number of um, computing societies around the world pretty much all share this uh, re uh, reciprocal uh, agreement. Um, now, students that graduate from our programs, because it's recognized around the world, you can quite easily articulate into um, master programs in universities around the world. Um, and obviously, if you want to continue your studies, then you're more than welcome to uh, come to the University of Wollongong to actually continue your studies, uh, whether it's a research master or a PhD program uh, with the University of Wollongong. So what does, what, what, what do we actually offer uh, in terms uh, of our degrees in partnership with um, SIM? So these are basically a, a snapshot of the degrees that we actually offer, uh, or the computing degrees anyway, that we offer uh, in partnership with uh, SIM. So we have the Bachelor of Computer Science and we offer a number of majors uh, for the Bachelor of Computer Science. So you can see major in big data, major in cybersecurity, major in digital system security and uh, majoring in game and mobile uh, development. So what these uh, majors basically mean uh, is that um, these are specializations. So towards your final year uh, of study, you, you, are, you, you can actually specialize in one of these majors and specializing in a major basically means that there's a subset of subjects that you have to do, which aligns with uh, these majors. So when I talk about the degree structure later on, I'll show you some of these subjects and um, what you have to do to satisfy uh, the requirements of the major. Now, what we also offer is a Bachelor of Information Technology, and we also offer a Bachelor of Business Information Systems. So those are the three degrees that um, uh, we offer uh, in partnership with uh, SIM. So moving on to a question that a lot of people like to ask is why study computer science or IT in the first place? You know, why, why bother to uh, study this? Because obviously uh, this, this uh, presentation is about what we offer in that domain. But uh, you know, a common question is why bother to, 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 to study this in the first place? Now, computer science and information technology basically changes the way people live their lives. And we can see this uh, every day, you know, in everyday society. So for example, give an example of this, um, you know, a few years ago, um, you know, when, when kids play outside, for example, they don't actually want to go back in the house. Whereas nowadays, it's the other way around, right? Kids play at home and they don't actually want to go outside. So as you can see, technology basically changes people's lives. And given the current situation, um, you know, this this face-to-face, uh, -face, uh um, physical face-to-face -face is not possible. So everything, as you can see, is all video conferenced. Um, and with things like uh, COVID and uh, the new normal uh, around the world, then everything is moving online. You know, whether it's uh, meetings, it's online, work is now online, um, things like um, selling and buying stuff, it's, it's all online. You know, cryptocurrency, everything is pretty much moving online. So the world is basically moving and the world is basically changing. Uh, so that everything is now pretty much done digitally, electronically. And along with that, obviously there are a lot of problems that come with that. For example, there are security problems, privacy problems, um, how to, you know, with, with more and more data coming up, how do you automate the process of uh, identifying or, or discovering patterns in the data? So all that obviously deals with uh, computer science and information technology. And as you can very well see, this changes the way that people operate and uh, how people actually interact um, you know, in, in, in the day-to-day -day lives. So to give you some examples of that, many of you would, would know of things like uh, you know, the, the, the current effort in terms of uh, driverless vehicles, for example. So uh, the, you know, there's a lot of effort going into creating uh, automated 
uh, uh, cars that can actually uh, drive. So for example, you, and this combines technology, like for example, com computer vision, uh, AI, uh, machine learning. So all, all these different technologies actually co uh, come together to create these uh, uh, technologies like self-driving cars. And uh, you think about um, uh, big data and artificial intelligence nowadays, then um, if you think about um, uh, games like uh, chess or uh, Go, for example, um, AI not can now actually defeat uh, humans in terms of um, you know the, these uh, games. So you can kind of see the high level cognition uh, skills that are available uh, nowadays in, in, in terms of these technologies. So other examples are things like, for example, Amazon Go. So if you know what Amazon Go basically is, so Amazon Go is again using technologies like computer vision, um, uh, image processing, uh, artificial intelligence, big data gathering. So what Amazon Go basically is, is you go into uh, Amazon Go uh, supermarket and you can pretty much take whatever products you want off the shelf and you can just walk up and uh, your groceries are pretty much built uh, to your account. You, but you don't actually have to bring a wallet. You don't actually have to pay physical cash or even you know bring your card or whatever because it's all registered and all, all done uh, electronically via Amazon Go. So that's obviously the way of the future. If you think about it, this is obviously trying to uh, increase the comfort of uh, people's lives so that you, you will not actually have to you know, carry a lot of things uh, around in your wallet, for example. If you think about uh, another example, like uh, IBM Watson. So this is an initiative where uh, if you think about legal documents, nowadays, obviously, everybody has to hire uh, actual you know, physical lawyers, for example. Now, what uh, IBM Watson Legal tries to actually do is to automate this process. So, for example, if you give uh, this software a legal document, it will actually translate this and um, uh, itemize this so that even a layman can actually understand it. So, it, it, it removes all the legal jargon, for example, or even the other way around. So, for example, if you want to produce a legal document, what you can actually do is list very basic things that you actually require in, in your normal language, you feed it through this uh, legal system and it comes out, it automatically produces a legal document uh, based on what you actually feed in. Um, so it obviously makes life a lot easier because uh, once you actually produce that document, then you can actually get a legal expert to actually look at the document. So it reduces the cost of having to uh, hire an actual human to actually look through those documents. So other things that a lot of people are obviously familiar with nowadays, for example, uh, cryptocurrency, you know, Bitcoin, for example, or other forms of cryptocurrency, that's all again to do with things like blockchain technology, uh, security, uh, computation, um, things like uh, 3D printing, that's again, you know, dealing with technology, or even things like, um, uh, uh, so this, this example here, Tricorder X, this is basically uh, trying to use technology to diagnose medical uh, issues through the use of technology without any human involvement. So the, the idea is basically to use computing hardware and software to actually diagnose any medical problems that people might have without the need to actually go to a, a, a physical doctor, for example. So you can see there's a lot of effort going around in the, the IT world. And as we pretty much say, you know, IT is the way of the future. Now, one of the things that a lot of people kind of ask or question is um, with all this, you know, automated effort, everything done, you know, using computers and software, um, does that mean that jobs will actually go, right? Jobs will actually be automated and, and the computer will actually take over a lot of these jobs. Now, the answer to the question basically is, um, so a lot of jobs will obviously be automated, but that doesn't mean that jobs will disappear because if you think about the nature of jobs, the jobs will really change, right? In the next 20 years, you think about this, yes, a lot of stuff will be automated, but that basically means that the job, the nature of jobs will change. It doesn't mean the jobs will disappear because if you think about the technologies that I uh, introduced uh, earlier on, a lot of them have to be developed by humans. A lot of them have to be maintained by humans. A lot of them have to be adapted and uh, modified by humans, but the nature of job basically changes, right? So you, you, you you may not require that many um, uh, lawyers, for example, you may not re require that many medical uh, staff, you may not re require that many drivers, you know, to give you some examples of um, the, 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 the areas that I mentioned earlier, or you may not require that many 
uh, people at the checkout counter. But what you do need is people to actually develop these systems, to maintain these systems, and to adapt these systems for uh, other areas um, to, 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 to improve uh, people's lives. So it's not that jobs are going to disappear, but jobs will definitely change and everything's moving more digital and into the computing world. So that's why if you're really passionate about the computing uh, discipline, then this is obviously the, 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 the degrees for you. So that's basically a, a brief introduction to why, um, why, why computing is so important and why uh, study computing. What I'll talk about now is a brief overview of the program structure. So as I mentioned earlier, we, we offer a number of degrees in, in partnership with SIM. And this is split into two different delivery modes. The first is known as full-time mode and the other is known as part-time mode. So what's the difference between full-time and part-time? Full-time simply means that all the lessons are actually done uh, during the day. So uh, typical hours during the day will be uh, from uh, 8.30 all the way until um, 6.30, for example. So that's um, day classes, that's full-time delivery mode. Part-time are basically a delivery mode for uh, between 7 to 10. So this is typically for students that may be working during the day and then they actually want to still study towards a degree um, you know, in the evenings. So part-time is basically meant for them. Um, in terms of the actual content, there's no difference between whether you study full-time or part-time. The contents are the same. It's just a matter of whether you study uh, full-time during the day, which uh, if you're not working, then that's probably the ideal mode for you. But if you're working, then you probably actually want to do it part-time because um, your, 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 your daytime is uh, filled with um, your, your normal uh, nine-to-five job. So in terms of the full-time delivery mode, uh, what we have is the Bachelor of Computer Science, uh, we offer big data, cybersecurity, digital system security, and uh, game and mobile development. All these are, uh, all, all are full-time courses. And the Bachelor of Business Information Systems as well, that's, uh, you can actually take that uh, full-time uh, mode. Whereas part-time, in part-time mode, then we offer the Bachelor of Information Technology and two majors of the Bachelor of Computer Science, that's in big data and digital systems uh, security. Um, So as far as the three degrees are concerned, now the three degrees actually share a number of common uh, subjects. And the idea behind this is that for one thing, you can quite easily transfer between uh, the different uh, degrees and even the different majors. Um, and obviously the later you are in your degree, then the harder it basically is to transfer. But as, you know, if you're earlier on in your degree, let's say first year, then it's actually quite easy to actually move between the different degrees. Now, the reason why we actually have this common subjects is because uh, of our design philosophy of what we actually believe in terms of um, our computing and IT degrees. What we actually believe is that regardless of which discipline um, a student actually takes, they should be able to communicate with other people in the computing uh, area. So to give a common first year, a common foundation, that basically means that any 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 one of these uh, computing students can actually be able to communicate with each other regardless of what you know, specialization they take later on. And this is important in the real world because in the real world, you don't really get to choose who you work with. You, you work with a range of people with different expertise and different backgrounds. And to work effectively as a team, you have to be able to communicate with different people with different backgrounds. So the idea behind the design of these degrees is basically to provide that a general foundation for all computing students that they can actually um, communicate across the board um, to, 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 to anybody in the computing world. So that's the, the, the fundamental idea behind this. Now, the other thing that you also notice in terms of the different degrees is that, for example, we offer different majors, right? We have a uh, major in big data, cybersecurity, and so on and so forth. But we do not have things like a bachelor of cybersecurity, a bachelor of big data, and so on and so forth. And this is actually done deliberately because we do not believe in you know, a bachelor of um, a specific area. And the reason why that's the case is because if you think about uh, what I mentioned earlier in terms of uh, when, I, when, I, when I basically uh, gave you a background of why to study computing in the first place, you know, computing changes people's lives and the, the, the field of computing is ever changing. It's not static, it, it's, it's dynamic, it, it keeps on moving, keeps on updating, keeps on advancing. And it doesn't remain at one place you know, for, for many, many years. If you learn something 
Today, you know, a few years down the track, it'll be completely different, right? So the idea behind um, us offering a Bachelor of Computer Science, for example, is that this is the fundamental discipline, irregardless of how the, 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 the world changes later on. And the fundamental point of what we try to teach is the basic skills so that people can actually learn how to learn and adapt to changes. So that's what we, we actually believe in. So we have majors that specialize in a certain area, but by and large, students that come up from our program have a very basic foundation that they can actually uh, adapt to the changes that can actually occur in, in future. Because if you think about this, 10, 20 years down the track, probably, uh, you know, big data will be called something else, the, the, the field would have changed to something else, cybersecurity would have changed to something else, but students that come up from the degree, uh, we give them the foundation so that they can actually adapt to uh, how the, the, the computing world will actually change, you know, 10, 20 years uh, in future. So that, that's, that's the core belief that we have, and that's the reason why our degrees are basically structured this way. Now, in terms of the specialization, so uh, especially what we consider to be the, the final year subjects, now, these are actually taught by uh, lecturers from the University of Wollongong itself. So, for example, you know, people like myself or uh, Associate Professor uh, Yan, for example, we actually teach these final year subjects. And the idea behind this is that uh, students will actually get the same experience of the content and the people that are actually delivering this because, uh, especially for the specialist subjects, then uh, the, the, the staff in the University of Wollongong are uh, the, the have the expertise uh, in, in, in these uh, different uh, disciplines. So as far as the subjects are concerned, as you can see, this is an overall snapshot of the different uh, subjects that we uh, offer. And as you can see, the, the first year subjects are common across the different uh, degrees. So uh, let me move my cursor if I may. So you can see that these subjects here, these are actually common across the different uh, degrees because as I mentioned earlier, the design philosophy is that we believe that all computing students should have a basic set of knowledge so that they can actually communicate with anybody in the computing world. And then later on, especially, you know, for example, second year onwards, then you actually specialize in different areas. So computer science, you will actually learn certain specific disciplines, um, BBIS and I, uh, Bachelor IT, you actually learn uh, other disciplines. Now, what's the difference between some of these different uh, disciplines? Now, so computer science is more about um, the raw data and algorithms and how you actually process this to uh, get information. So for example, you know, software development, all that is more uh, computer science based. Whereas the Bachelor of Business Information Systems and the Bachelor of IT, that's more applied focus. So for example, um, you may not actually develop the programs from ground up, but you use existing things to adapt um, programs, or you have, for example, data, and how do you organize the data uh, in, into, you know, and, and convey information uh, to different people. Uh, now, obviously, the Bachelor of Business Information Systems, now that has a business focus. So it's a hybrid degree in the sense that it's both um, an, an IT degree, and at the same time, uh, you have knowledge in the business world because of the fact that in, in the business world nowadays, people use a lot of IT, right? So uh, it gives you the best of both worlds. You have the business side of things and you understand the IP, IT perspective. You can merge them together to solve a lot of the uh, business world's problems uh, using IT. Now, the third year subjects on the other hand, so this is, this is the, 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 the specialist subjects and, and these are the subjects that are actually taught by uh, the, the UOW lecturers themselves. So you're taught by the uh, experts in the domain. And as you can see, once you specialize into these different areas, then these have the specialist subjects. So you can see the subjects in these dis different uh, disciplines are different because uh, they are tailor-made for the specific uh, discipline. So that's basically the year three subjects. And as you can see, all this culminates into the final year uh, project. So all the skills that you actually learn uh, throughout, uh, all the knowledge that you've actually acquired throughout uh, the course of the degree, you will actually do a final year group project where um, you get into groups of uh, a certain number of students and um, you will actually uh, work on a real life uh, industry based uh, problem. And this is, this is where uh, you will actually use all the different skills that you actually learn throughout the degree. And what you also be doing in this is, so for the project itself, 
students are actually across the different disciplines. So you're not actually, okay, all computer science students will be in one group, all uh, bachelor of business information systems will be in, in a, a different group. Um, the students are actually mixed. And the idea behind this is because in the real world, you work across teams as well. So you don't actually work within uh, your specific discipline. You're, the idea is to actually give students exposure to working across different uh, disciplines. So this is obviously to build up their knowledge and experience uh, with different disciplines as well. So that's the idea behind this and, and that's the structure of the degree. Now, as far as um, the number of subjects in the study load is basically concerned, now in general, so, so there are four uh, sessions uh, per year. Uh, you can see starting in January, April, July, and October. And each session, um, students are expected to take two modules per session. So that's the standard or normal study load. Now, um, there are students that feel that, okay, two subjects, for example, um, may be too high, for example, if, if they are working uh, in a day, so they may want to, to, to study only one subject uh, per session. So that is possible, that's perfectly possible. But obviously, if you study one subject per session, then you have to obviously bear in mind that it will take you longer to finish uh, your degree. Um, now, the other thing that some uh, students like to do as well is, for example, if uh, they may get an internship or something, now you can take what's called a leave of absence. So, for example, you, if, you, if you study um, the first six months of the year and you, you, you find an internship or play, uh, you know, industry placement position, so you can take a leave of absence, you can take six months off to uh, complete your internship, and then you can actually come back to the degree and, and, and continue where you left off. So that, that's perfectly fine as well. So in terms of the people that will actually be teaching you for your final year, so if you think about this, what, what I stressed earlier is that um, um, the, the specialist subjects will actually be taught by individuals who specialize in those areas. So this is a a, a, a number of the, the people that will actually be teaching you in your final year uh, subjects. And one of the key things about this is that these are actually people that actually work in the area. So if you, uh, you can quite easily check this, but if you do a Google search on any one of the names here, you will actually find that these are experts in the area. And if you do a Google search, then you will see um, what they've actually contributed to the scientific field uh, in their respective areas. Uh, one of the things that you, you, you can easily tell whether or not the university is a good university or um, a, a, a not so good university is if you Google the profile of the people that will be teaching you, and if you see only, for example, their Facebook page or their LinkedIn page, then that basically means that they, they haven't really contributed much to the scientific area. But if you do a search and if you find that uh, there are a lot of things that actually pop up and, and you can actually see the disciplines that they are in, then that basically means that they've actually contributed um, to the scientific field. So, um, so these are the people that will be teaching you in your final year. Now I'll talk a little bit about uh, some of our graduates that have uh, graduated from the program. And later on, we have an, uh, a graduate that will be actually sharing his experiences with you as well. But I'll just uh, briefly mention some of the graduates that have um, uh, gone through our program. So for example, um, uh, our graduate here, uh, who has uh, graduated from the Bachelor of IT, a uh, Bachelor of Information Technology, uh, Chang Xiaoran. So as you can see from his quote here, what he basically said was, uh, and he's basically working in Google Asia Pacific as a manager there. So it's a quite high ranking position. And you can see what he basically said was, the SIMUW degree program has built a solid technologies and management foundation for me. Uh, it provided me with a platform to ramp up myself with new skills and to build up a more diversified network. By leveraging my working experience, I was able to understand the lectures better with my own industry uh, perspective and also improve my school projects uh, with real world scenarios. So he's one of our um, graduates uh, from the Bachelor of IT. Uh, next one is basically Herman Vijaya. So um, Herman basically continued. So after he, he, he graduated with a Bachelor of Computer Science, majoring in digital system security. Uh, he continued on to do a master by research with the Singapore University of Technology and Design. So as I mentioned, uh, our degrees are basically recognized uh, worldwide. So you can quite easily uh, complete our degree and move on to, uh, to further your studies at, at, at master level or even PhD level. Um, so computing is not just for 
uh, male, even uh, you know, e not just for men, even though um, uh, the majority, the demographics are as a, as a very heavy male dominated uh, area, but it doesn't mean that uh, you need to be male to uh, compete. This is an example of one of our Bachelor of Computer Science uh, graduates, uh, Shu Zhang. Zhang. And as you can see from this code here, um, even though uh, you know, being trained, uh, she, she, obviously she, she, she was trained since young that uh, it helps her to actually be able to succeed in a male dominated uh, tech industry. Uh, so Susan Zhang uh, graduated uh, and, and she, 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 she's been in a number of positions. She started off with Google, then she went to uh, ByteDance. Um, so if you, if you know, uh, if you've heard of TikTok, for example, so ByteDance is a company that developed TikTok. Uh, now she's with Amazon uh, Australia. And recently this year, in fact, she came back to Australia and she's now actually uh, doing a PhD with uh, Associate Professor uh, Yan Lu here. So she's actually back with us. Um, and um, the last profile I'll talk about is basically Harsh Shah. So he's now a senior associate uh, in cybersecurity uh, in KPMG, Singapore. And he graduated with a Bachelor of Computer Science majoring in system, uh, digital system security. And as you can see from his quote here, um, the program helped him uh, gain a wide uh, array of conceptual knowledge, especially because plus our degrees are, have a lot of hands-on experience. So um, the hands-on experience combined with the theoretical experience basically helps students to actually be able to uh, land themselves a job in, in, in the real world. So what I'll do now is I'll hand over to one of our uh, graduates to do a uh, presentation. Thank you, Casey. Um, I'd like to uh, introduce um, our graduate, uh, Desmond. So Desmond is an alumni of our program, uh, one of our favorite students when he was back with us. And uh, we're really grateful that, uh, you know, he has agreed to come back to do some sharing. I think based on his experience with us when he was an undergraduate and perhaps a little bit about what he's currently doing. Yeah. Okay, over to you, Desmond. Yeah. Hello. Uh, okay, hi, hi everyone. Uh, so uh, my name is Desmond. So uh, I have graduated from uh, the course like some years back, I think in 2016 or 17. Uh, I'm currently working as a senior engineer in uh, Rakuten Wiki. It's, uh, I'm actually doing uh, mobile mobile app engineering. And um, uh, yeah, so I'm here to share more about like uh, maybe about how, how this course uh, relate to, to, to the working world uh, since uh, the professor has really shared uh, extensively on, on, on how the, the, the course is like. And yeah, so, so uh, I'd like to maybe share some insights on, uh, uh, on, on maybe help you make a decision on maybe uh, what, what major you can pick or how, how this course will affect your career prospect, right? So um, maybe you have a lot of questions like um, you, you, you heard that uh, big data is you know, a, a big thing right now. So maybe you want to be a data engineer or there's a strong demand in IT security. So maybe, maybe you would like to be a security consultant or you want you want to learn how to hack or whether you want to create games or you want to do DevOps or anything of that uh, in the tech industry. So um, first of all, uh, you, I'll, I'll, be have, I'll be very honest and I say that most of the thing that, uh, that I need to, to perform my work. So, so most, most, uh, well, most of the, the, the knowledge and the skills that I require at work, uh, I learn uh, on my own. <laughs> so uh, if you ask me very honestly, if you need to attend this course to start working out, uh, if, if you really need to attend this course or, or you can start working uh, in the tech industry, even without attending this course, I will say technically uh, it's a yes, because uh, uh, in, in this tech industry, they really see uh, your skills, uh, they, they don't really see what you study. But then uh, I, I have to say that this is a very big but. Um, uh, not, not that the course didn't teach us anything, but um, after attending the course, it, it certainly made me reflect that, wow, uh, it made my life so much easier when, uh, when I step out into the working world. So it, it is not that the, the course didn't teach me anything. So um, in, in, my, in my job, um, my, 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 my role is uh, Android app, uh, engineer, so I, I developed a video streaming app. So the, the course didn't teach me how to build an app, of course. Uh, however, it provided me with the software engineering fundamentals. So it teach me how to design classes, how to perform testing, things like that. It didn't teach me how to scale my app to millions of users, 
but then uh, it taught me about data structures and algorithms and you know how to analyze the space time complexity required uh, for our usage in our app so obviously the course didn't teach me how to do uh, video streaming so so because uh, i'm making a video streaming app however it, it taught it taught us the the, the fundamentals the, the networking how data can be transferred from uh, servers to clients and vice versa so it, it the, the course obviously didn't teach me how to you know how, how to do things like how to hack how, how to do this how to do that but it, it really teach the the, the principles behind uh, the, uh, the the tech that we that we, we are required the, the skills that we are required to, to, to perform our, our, our role so when when looking back when I when I attend this course when when I first started this course I, I don't know anything about tech uh, when I graduated from the course, I find that um, I still don't know a lot of things. But then um, the, the, the course certainly uh, showed me what is possible. Uh, it exposed me to what I don't know. So I, I think this is a very important thing that, that you, that there's a very big difference between not knowing anything and knowing what you know, what you don't know. And, and the, the course really give me the strong foundation and the skills required to fill up the gap and learn what I need. So, so in, in the event that I want to, uh, I, I need this, this particular skill at work, I need to do this, I'll do that. I, I find that it's very easy to pick things up because I have the strong foundations. So coming back to the question, like after you graduate, you, you want to be, you want to do data engineer, you want to be an app developer, you want to be a hacker, anything. I'll say that actually you, you really can be anything you want to be. So, um, so what I, I'll, I'll summarize that the, the, what the course provides is like, a, is like a map and a compass, right? So they tell you the places you can go and they give you the directions, but then uh, you, you chart your own path. So you, you, you decide what you want to learn and, 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 you are, and you'll be really glad that you really have the skills and the knowledge to, to really pick things up. And, uh, and uh, it, it doesn't really matter that the, the major that, that, you, that you decide to pick or or, or anything like that, because uh, ultimately it, it won't set in stone uh, what your career will be like, uh, as long as you have the strong fundamentals, you have the strong uh, the the principles behind software engineering, behind the technology behind it, uh, you are able to do uh, anything you like to to achieve. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Desmond. I think it was a very uh honest and a very good summary of uh, your experience here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, if, uh, I think we have uh, concluded the formal part of the uh, session, which is basically uh, all of us talking. Uh, maybe I'd like to uh, open it up to the floor now for anyone who has a question that can be directed to uh, either uh, uh, Professor Casey, Professor Junian, myself, or even to Desmond. Uh, if you'd like to uh, ask a question, you can either key that into the uh, chat box uh, that's, uh, you know, can be clicked below your Zoom window. Or if you'd like to unmute yourself to speak, you can also indicate that. I think I can actually unmute you so that you can actually verbalize your question. There are actually quite many of us in this room. So uh, you'd be good if someone could, uh, you know, just ask a question and I think that could set the uh, ball rolling. Does uh, anyone want to start? <laughs> Casey June is actually raining here in Singapore, at least over at my place. It's uh, heavy rain. <laughs> Looks sunny at the beach. Bit... <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, it's actually very heavy. Yeah. Mm. I I don't know whether any one of you happen to be in SIM at this time house but if you do happen to be on our campus I would also like to encourage you to actually uh, go for one of the campus tours around the campus so that you can actually have a look at the facilities and infrastructure that uh, we have and uh, you actually know the kind of study environment that you also be in uh, if you choose to enroll your studies with us. Um, I actually see two questions in the chat I think Pauline has helped uh, populate that 
Um, Casey and June, can you see that? Uh, maybe we can try and uh, collectively try and take the question. Um, the first one is actually asking for a student with A-level IGP.62, what foundation program can she go to? Mm. Casey, will we be able to answer that or do we have to KIV that? I'm not too uh, sure actually, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure, sure. Um... IGP point uh, 62, but um, th there is a SIM diploma program. So if you've completed, for example, um, A level, and you can actually go through the SIM diploma program. And then once you complete that, you can actually uh, transition into uh, the second year of uh, the, the one of the degrees, depending on which degree you, you, uh, you're interested in. Mm. Uh, okay, maybe for this particular student, uh, I'll get Perlene to probably get down your contact details or if you can send Perlene your contact details, we will do a follow-up with you after this session. Okay, uh, if I move on to the next question, there's actually one that asks, may I understand how the evaluations will be conducted? Do we have a split between classwork, project and exams? I think this is asking about our assessment structure. Yeah, uh, Casey or June? Yeah. So most assessments are based on, so, so different subjects have uh, obviously different assessment uh, structures, um, but most subjects, what most subjects basically have are uh, this, the hands-on assignment work. Um, and at the end of it, usually there, there is an exam that is more, let's say, theoretical based. So usually it's split uh, between the, the, the practical side and the theoretical side as well. Uh, so most subjects are pretty much uh, structured that way. Um, if uh, some more special subjects, like for example, um, the final year project, then that's a project based, that's pure project based, there's no exams or anything, it's, it's uh, you work in a group, you uh, develop uh, a product uh, with the, all the del deliverables, uh, you do a presentation, so it's, it's, it's all hands-on based, uh, and there's, there's no theoretical part uh, in, in, in a project based subject. But uh, for most other subjects, they, it's split into both uh, um, assignment-based and uh, exam-based. Thank you, Casey. I think the next question, maybe I'll have to direct that to June to help. So uh, Prospect is actually asking whether they can know the difference between our VBIS and our BIC program. Okay. Um we don't want to have a, a very clear separation between uh, BBIS and BIT. And as Casey just mentioned that all the degrees, computing degrees will have some common foundations and the students are required to do the foundation subjects and then before they progress to uh, different specific disciplines. Um, BBIS and BIT are very closely related. Um, the one difference is obviously BBIC is more kind of business oriented, business focused. It has strong business focus um, in the sense that there are traditional business subjects in the, in the program. So you do subjects like um, uh, management or marketing or, or even accounting in order to understand how the uh, business operates and how information technology is able to support business operations. On the other hand, the BIT is uh, a more about um, uh, application of the information technology and the data management and knowledge management, so how you convert the raw data into meaningful information and the knowledge in order to support or, or, different, uh, or different things in the, in the world. So, um, and also BBIS is four-time study. We only have the four-time program, while BIT has a, a part-time uh, mode only. So yeah, so the conclusion is actually BBIS is more kind of a hybrid degree uh, with some business flavors, uh, while the BIT is, is a traditional uh, computing degree uh, with the focus on the data management and knowledge management. Okay, thank you, Jun. I uh, believe that should answer the question. Um, okay, while we're waiting more for, uh, more for people perhaps to warm up to ask more questions, maybe uh, I uh, can just uh, talk a little bit 
first, <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit about the student exchange program, if I could uh, just take some time to share about it. So uh, we actually have a student exchange program uh, between UOW and SIM. And I think that's something that a lot of our students actually uh, look forward to, to have an opportunity to be able to go to UOW campus uh, onshore in Australia to uh, study for a period of uh, six months where you can actually experience a, a cultural and a different learning environment altogether. So what happens is that uh, when you join our program, you will have an opportunity to apply to go for this student exchange. And if you are selected, you will only need to pay uh, the cost fees that's, that's equivalent to what you will pay in SIM, but you will then have an opportunity to go to UOW to undertake your studies. So of course, the airfare accommodation costs are all on your own. But I think based on the badges of students that have come back after they have actually done their student exchange, I think the experience is definitely very invaluable. And uh, even for myself, when I have uh, seen them before and after, I think a lot of them have actually become a lot more independent. And uh, I think the whole learning experience there has really enriched uh, their student life. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so while I'm saying this, great, I see another question coming in. Uh, the question mm -hmm. is, uh, if I miss the entry requirements of the A-level route, will I be able to appeal to this program or do I have to go through the uh, diploma in IT offered by SIM if I only have two H2 passes? Uh, Casey, would you like to help to answer that? So I think basically this prospect probably does not have three H2 passes, but only two. Uh, will he or she be still be able to meet our entry requirements? Uh, it, it depends on the aggregate score, actually. Um, there's actually a formula to actually work that out. Uh, but uh, um, even, even, if, even if you don't actually meet the score, um, you, you can actually still go through that diploma of IT uh, road and you actually end up at the same same place, so it's, it, it, it doesn't uh, disadvantage you uh, uh, to do that. Okay, maybe for this particular uh, prospect, could I also uh, request for you to perhaps pass your contact details to uh, Perlin and uh, we can actually work out with you uh, the exact score that you have and the event that you cannot meet the entry requirement for our program, then like Casey mentioned, you'll still be able to go through the DIT and then enter our program subsequently, okay? Uh, moving on for the next question, most uh, U.S. universities ask for a four-year degree. How do we proceed after a three-year degree with the UOW Bachelor of Com Computer Science? And uh, any pathways to make it a four-year degree? Uh, so there is. So, so, so four, four, four years. So our fourth year is actually the honors year. Um, uh, unlike... Uh, uh, degrees from uh, UK, for example, that is three years and, and, and they, they bundle it with honours. Australian degrees are three years and the honours is actually an additional year on top of it. But um, I, I should actually say that uh, the honours year is actually offered in UW Australia. Uh, SIM doesn't actually uh, have that uh, fourth year uh, program. Um, now, what, what you also find is that for a lot of US universities, because of the fact that a lot of other countries have three-year degrees, like Australia and, and UK, for example. So um, if you want to enter, let's say, into a master program in the US, they actually, a lot of them actually have a pre-master year for students that actually come up with a three-year degree. So they actually have a pre-master pre year before you actually, uh, which, which counts as a fourth year before you actually enter, let's say, a master program in, in, in a US, U.S. university. Okay, uh, there's now another question about uh, math. So this prospect is saying that uh, I've not done my math for A-levels, but only uh, in the O-levels exam. So how hard will it be to cope with my math module in IT? Uh, is he Arjun, anyone? <laughs> That, that, that kind of depends. Uh, it depends on the, 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 the student, really. Um, so there's actually no fundamental math requirement entering the degree. Um, uh, we, we don't actually assume um, any specific uh, mathematical knowledge. So the, the, the amount of math uh, in, in, uh, in a degree is, is meant to be actually be covered within the degree itself. Now, having said that, 
some disciplines are more mathematical than other disciplines. So for, to give an example of this, um, let's say, for example, uh, the discipline uh, digital system security. Uh, and, and one of the subjects in that is uh, cryptography. Now, cryptography is actually all pure math based. Right? It's all the, the foundation of cryptography is, 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 is complete mathematics. So in, if, 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 if you're interested in that discipline, then obviously um, uh, you have to be comfortable with, with, with math. Uh, but other disciplines, for example, uh, don't actually have that intensive uh, math requirement. So um, in terms of how difficult it is to cope with uh, the, 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 the math uh, subjects, for instance, that, that kind of depends on the individual student because some students come in with no mathematical background and they can uh, they have no problems or issues with uh, these math subjects. Uh, other students uh, find it more difficult. Um, so in some sense, it depends on uh, you know for, for one thing the, the, the student themselves and also how much effort you put into the, the subject as well. So that that obviously counts. But uh, I, I would say that we don't actually assume. Uh, that students have a mathematical background. Yeah, can I also add on that? Um, I think in the program, there's a, there's a specific math module, math subject in both um, BCom, Psych and BIT and BBIS. There's a, a specific subject talking about uh, math. And, and also in some other subjects, uh, some math knowledge are needed. But in that case, the math topics will be covered in those subjects. So as Casey just said, we do not assume that students have any mass uh, prior knowledge or background before they join the program. Um, in Australia, uh, the degrees have the same structure as in Singapore. And uh, we have quite a number of students who do not do any mass subjects in high school and they enter our, our degrees and uh, they cope with the mass component of the program without, without too many problems. Um, but obviously it all uh, depends on students uh, themselves. Uh, you need to, if you do not have math background, obviously you need to work harder than other students maybe uh, in order to kind of uh, make sure that you're able to cope with the subjects. Casey, I think, I think Celine is off. Okay. Celine is offline. I think I'm having a bit of connection issues <laughs> myself. Um, okay, I think the next question is, uh, I'm aware that there would be no honors awarded for this undergraduate program. Would that hinder me from trying to try for a master's degree in the future? Um, now that depends on what master degree you are actually aiming for. If it's master by coursework, uh, then there's, there's there's no issue for master by coursework. Um, for for bachelor degree, most master by coursework will accept even a three year bachelor degree. Um, for master by research, then master by research generally uh, requires, let's say, for example, uh, doing an honors year first, because the honors honors year is actually uh, well, in, in Australian terms anyway, the, the, the honours year is actually the bridge between uh, the, the coursework undergraduate to a, a, a master by research uh, degree. Um, if, if, for instance, uh, so similar to a question previously about, uh, for example, US universities, uh, whether or not uh, you know, a three-year degree you can actually enter uh, into a US university uh, you know, for, for master, for example, because uh, U.S. undergraduates are typically four years. Now, um, this is similar to my previous answer, where a lot of U.S. universities have this pre-university, uh, pre-pre-masters year. So, for for students that have a three-year degree, you can actually do go. You, you can actually sign up for that pre-master year uh, before you actually go on to uh, a, a master degree. Um, so, it, it it's not really going to be a major issue. Uh, in terms of, for example, um, Singapore universities, Singapore universities, a number of our graduates uh, have actually gone on to master degrees in, in some of the local Singapore universities. So that, that's not an issue either. Okay, 
sorry, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, if I can just help uh, with some of the questions. So I think uh, we are seeing a, a bunch of questions about the way that uh, we have been conducting our lessons. Um, so the first question says, the third year class, which are handled by UOW staff, would this be an interactive session and will it have uh, live staff during the session? Um, uh, yeah, okay, Casey, yep. Yeah. So, so I assume you're asking about... Uh, the intensive it, deliveries, I think, yeah. Uh, okay, so usually, um, you know, in the pre-COVID world, um, the UW lecturers actually fly to Singapore to actually deal, deliver face to face in Singapore. Um, so that that's uh, how it used to be uh, <laughs> um, during the the, the, the pre COVID era. So now now obviously borders are all shut and uh, we, we we can't move we can't go anywhere. So the classes are actually conducted online, but it's actually done live. So it's it's like this, right? It's it's done live, and uh, it's interactive in the sense that you know students can actually ask questions. Uh, uh, throughout the lecture and, and, and the staff will actually answer it much like what we're actually doing now. Um. Yep. And uh, this leads to the next questions that also ask about other lessons and modules for this program carried out face-to-face -face or through online lessons like in uh, UOL. Uh, it's actually face-to-face. -face. Um, so your first year and second year subjects are delivered by uh, SIM lecturers, um, so all those are face-to-face. -face. Your final year modules, as I mentioned earlier, um, usually the UW staff actually fly to Singapore to deliver those uh, lectures, but um, because obviously now we can't do that, so now it's still done um, live, uh, you know, semi-face-to-face, -face, but it's not really, you know, it, it's, it's, it's done online in a, in a live setting, so it's stream, stream live online. Um, uh, much like what we're, we're actually doing now. Um. Okay, maybe if I can just add on to that. So uh, I think like Casey has mentioned uh, pre-COVID and COVID. So currently we are much uh, adhering to the uh, guidelines that have been given to us by uh, MOE and CPE, which actually enforces a cap of uh, 50 students per class. So as far as possible, where uh, resources are able to uh, be provided, we have allowed, we have tried to bring students back to campus for some of the classes, but uh, majority of the classes uh, are still going to be online until there's possibly some revision to uh, the guidelines that we have been given uh, for safe distancing. Yeah. Okay, uh, the next question is about employability and starting pay. So the question goes, um, how is the employability and starting pay of UOW SIM grads compared to other graduates in other universities such as NUS and NTU? Okay, I suppose I have to take this question. Um, okay, so uh, what happens is that uh, when our graduates uh, actually uh, graduate, um, six months later, we would actually conduct what we call a graduate employment survey uh, with them. So in that survey, we do try to pull for information such as uh, both studying pay as well as the employment rate. The employment rate is actually published on our website uh, for UOW overall. Uh, which includes both psychology and uh, IT grads. I believe the percentage is uh, around about 85 uh, based on last year's uh, data, if I'm not wrong. Uh, but uh, if I were to look at just UWIT itself, it is actually in the 90s. Yeah, but we have actually published an overall rate because that's actually representative of the entire university. Uh, in terms of starting pay, um, I'm not too sure whether the uh, local universities do publish, but if they do, we would make a comparison. So, uh, like I said, um, in general, we find that it is quite comparable. And in fact, for the UOW IT program, uh, compared to our own internal SIM programs, I think the UOW IT graduates have got the highest starting salary. So I think that's within our organization and that's something that we are pretty comfortable to confirm. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the next question, is there any internship for uh, either the BBIS program or the Bachelor of Com Science program? Uh, Casey or June? There's an internship, but it's optional. At the moment, um, it's, uh, it's not a compulsory requirement of uh, any accreditation bodies, uh, but we do encourage students to take the internship. 
Um, and also, I think SIM also has some uh, agreement with the local industry to offer the internship opportunities. Um, but I mean, in fact, uh, many of our students don't actually like the internship because it will delay their graduation. And uh, what they actually prefer is to finish their studies as soon as possible and then get a job in the in the computing industry. Yes, so uh, yeah. On to that, I think what June has said is uh, pretty true. So given our term structure, which is really quite compact, so we run a three-month lead uh, term structure. So if you imagine a three-month term structure would be around 12 to 13 weeks. Uh, our study week is about uh, seven weeks in total. Uh, we have about one week exam break and week eight to uh, nine, nine or so would be when exams are. And then you have a break of about two weeks or so and then you're back again for the next uh, term. So looking at this structure, I think it is challenging for our students uh, who want to actually go on to do internship. So we find that uh, perhaps because of that, a lot of them find that there's a lot more value when they try and complete it earlier and then uh, proceed on with uh, looking for proper employment after their uh, graduation. But having said that, I think there are, so currently, I think uh, Casey mentioned early on in his uh, briefing that we currently have a tie-up with uh, CSIT, which is the Center for Strategic Infocom Technologies. Uh, we have been in this partnership with them for a long, long time. And uh, what happens or what undergoes this partnership is that we actually have a collaboration where uh, if they can select our students, they actually participate in the FYP project together with CSIT, which involves a three-month uh, work on site in SIM where they do up some of the studies and research and the remaining three months of the final year project they actually go down to CSIT and work on site there with the engineers and the supervisors so this is kind of like a hybrid model of FYP internship that we have developed and I think we are also increasingly trying to see whether we can have more of such models to allow our students to kind of enjoy both internship as well as a final year project experience yeah um, if I can move on, the next question is, what is the cohort size per year? Is there a cap? Is there entry interviews? Uh, there, there's, no, there's no cap. Um, there, there's, there's, no, there's no entry cap. Um, uh, and, and there's no, there's no uh, interview either. <laughs> so um, you, 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 you pretty much apply based on uh, your academic record and uh, the decision is actually based uh, on that. Yep. Okay. For a person like me who does not have much exposure to coding, or I'll take it programming, how difficult would it be for the person to, uh, I guess, cope in our course? Okay. So, so um, si similar to the, the math question that we had earlier, we actually do not assume uh, any prior coding or programming uh, background. So, um, we, we, we train students from, from ground up from scratch. Um, now, this, this actually relates to one of the questions, I think we missed the question earlier about uh, what programming language uh, is, is, is in the course. Now, uh, first year programming language that we use is Java. And um, through, uh, in, in the program, there is a Python elective subject. Um, and if you do computer science, <coughs> excuse me, you do computer science, then uh, you, you do C, C++ as well. Uh, so yeah, coming back to this, this, this current question about uh, exposure to coding, um, it's, it's not, a, we, we assume no, no knowledge in coding and, and, and you start from you know, pretty much as a beginner. Thank you, Casey. Uh, yeah, I might have missed out some of the earlier questions when I got uh, kicked out of the session. So if there's any ones that I've missed, I would appreciate if y'all can help to bring it up. Uh, if I can move on, there's another question uh, that's a bit generic. It's asking, I would like to know more about the curriculum for the uh, cybersecurity major. Um, maybe if I can just add on to this question, because I think uh, Casey briefly ran through the structure of our comm science program that explained that year one and year two is kind of common between all the majors and the differentiation is really in the uh, year three where they actually focus on the different major core programs. Yeah, so if I can just add on one more question to make it tougher for KC, sorry. Common one that we get is the difference between digital and cybersecurity major, especially for the students who are trying to decide. Yeah. So, um, so as you can see from the, the, the slides here, this is, this is the overall structure. 
So if you're doing a, if it's a cybersecurity or digital system security, this is under the computer science uh, discipline. Um, now, as you can see, the cybersecurity is basically the ones here. Now, the difference between cybersecurity and digital system security is that digital system security is more uh, foundational and cybersecurity is actually built on top of digital system security. So if you think about this, cybersecurity lays the, uh, sorry, digital system security lays the foundational framework uh, through things like um, encryption, cryptography, all this, this, this lays the foundation. So all cybersecurity is built on top of that foundation. So if you think about the, the different layers, digital system security is the fundamental layer. Cybersecurity is the layer that actually is built on top of uh, digital system security. So that's, that's actually the difference between them. Um, and, and if you want to actually see the, 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 for example, the subjects and so on and so forth, you can actually find the, uh, the prospectus on the SIM uh, website. Uh, and and, and that, that actually lists these uh, tables. So if you want a copy for yourself, you, you can actually, it, it's, it's actually publicly available on the SIM website. Yep. Okay. Uh, moving down to the next question. Uh, this is actually on the CSBE exams uh, in India. I think we have a question that says that the current year CSBE exams are delayed in India and the results are, will probably be out only by middle of July. I believe the applications for the October intake will not close before the end of July. Um, Okay, I uh, think we are aware of the current situation of the exams in India. We would probably have to uh, relook at some of our application closing dates. I think usually the uh, limitation is because of the student uh, visa application. And for October, we also have not confirmed whether we would be able to resume most of our lessons face to face. Uh, given that it's still some time uh, to October. So maybe for these questions, we'll probably let the reps in the country know. And, but we will take note that there has been a delay and as far as possible, we would try to cater uh, to allow for the applications to come in. If you are saying that it will only be in by mid-July, as far as possible, we would try to accept them even for our October intake. Yeah. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, how well do you have to score for A-levels in order to gain admission to this program? Would 60 RP be sufficient? Um, if you're talking about the uh, minimum cutoff for A-level score, we are looking at a minimum of uh, nine, score of nine, and uh, looking at your highest, your best three H2 and the best one H1 subject, which has to be content-based. So the way that you work out your scores would be basically uh, A is actually allocated five points, B four, C is three. So you pick your best three H2, uh, you know, compare that with the score. So if you're having B, that's uh, four points, you mark, you plus, if you have a C, is three, you total that for your best three H2. Take your best H1 subject, divide that score by two, add up this two. If your score works out to be a minimum of nine, then you would be eligible for our program. Okay, if you find this very complicated because I'm speaking too fast, like I said, uh, please contact Perlene and leave your contact details behind. Uh, after that, I can contact you separately and then help you to work out the calculation for your A-level scores. Okay, yep. Uh, moving down, uh, can you start with uh, part-time studies um, and then change to full-time study for year three? Uh, if I can take that, okay, so the answer is uh, yes, where it is available. So I think like what Casey explained, not all our programs are available in both full-time and part-time. I think the only two that's available would be the digital system security major, as well as the big data major. So if you happen to embark in these two majors, there is flexibility for you to switch from full to part-time. In fact, at any time during the course of your studies, Okay, uh, as long as, uh, yeah, so there are some administrative fees that's involved, but there's actually no difficulties given that the programs are exact. There might be slight uh, schedule changes in the way that we offer the modules. Uh, this meaning that, uh, again, no problem with you changing, but there could be a change in your duration as a result of your change, simply because the modules that you're supposed to take may not be offered in part-time and full-time at the same time. 
So you might just need to note this, but like I said, there's no restriction. It's really uh, because of a scheduling issue that you might not be able to complete it in the same duration. There could be possibilities of a slight delay. Uh, but before you make a decision, you can always speak to one of our program executives who would be able to advise you uh, exactly what is required so that you are aware of the change before you take. Okay, and having said that, it is also possible for you to, to change majors anytime during your studies as well. So, uh, so we also allow transfers from part-time, full-time, as well as transfers across majors. Okay, moving on to the next question. When is the orientation intake? When does the norm orient in orientation normally happen? Maybe I could say that. So because we take in students four times a year, so the orientation normally happens around about two weeks before the commencement of the next semester. So if I will take it that the uh, commencement of the next semester for us is uh, around about end March or 1st April, our orientation would be about second week or second week of March in general. So once you have accepted our offer, we would publish this information to you so that you're aware of when orientation happens. So again, before uh, COVID happened, orientation is always happening face-to-face -face on SIM campus. Uh, and we take it as an opportunity to meet you, greet you, take you around the campus. We also usually have a student council, the SIM student council, who would actually uh, run some games so that you can get to know your classmates before you actually meet each other in the classrooms. But given that uh, this is the current situation, we have actually converted to doing a lot of the orientation online. But uh, the support and information is still there. It's just that the games and fun may not be there until we get an opportunity to see you back uh, on campus, okay? Uh, let me see. Okay, moving down again. If I were to enter U or WSIM through the uh, Diploma in IT program, will I be missing out on important modules and lessons normally covered in the first year of the program structure? Uh, Kissy, you want to help uh, with that? Yep. yep. Um, so not not really because uh, the the diploma program is actually designed to mirror uh, the first year of uh, the UW program, and in fact, you ha we have a number of the people teaching in the SIM diploma are the same people that actually teach in uh, the actual uh, UW degree as well. So um, not really going to be missing out on anything um, in terms of. Uh, uh, Sub, uh, subject content wise, it's, 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 you're, you're not really going to be missing out on anything. Okay, um, let me see. Uh, okay, that's a uh, thank you from uh, one of the prospects, uh, Casey and June, for your response to I think the question on the fourth year studies. Uh, the prospect has got another question to add on to say I would also like to know whether four years of my course will only be in Singapore or would I be required to go to UOW in the middle of the course? Okay, so the the three year uh, the three year course is uh, completely in uh, Singapore, right? So uh, you, you do the, com the, the, the three years in Singapore and you graduate with a bachelor degree. So that, that's completely self-contained in Singapore itself. Now, if you want to do an honors year, which is an additional year after the, the, the bachelor uh, uh, degree, then that is only offered in UOW Australia. So you, you complete, if, if you want to do the honors year, you, you complete your three-year degree in Singapore. And then for your fourth year, you can actually come here to do your fourth year. Yeah. Uh, I think we have another question probably on... Uh... I think the A-levels, uh, if I'm not getting it correctly, please correct me. Uh, the question reads, if the credit point is 7.5, is there any chance to get into UOW for any IT program? So like I said, I'm reading this only based on uh, A-level score 7.5. Um, like I said, our score is we are really looking at a minimum of 9. Uh, if I can answer on behalf of KC, I do not think that we would be able to accept someone with 7.5. So if that really happens, uh, like I said, the alternative pathway would be to go through the uh, foundation or DIT program that's offered currently by SIM and will still be able to bridge into our program. Yep. So like I said, if there's any follow-up required on this question, please get in touch with uh, Ms. Pauline and uh, we can get back to you after this session.
I understand uh, that some of you uh, might have only joined the session much later after the uh, briefing has finished. Uh, like I said, we are already into the tail end where we are taking questions. But if you still happen to have any questions uh, or any clarifications that you would like, uh, you know, to address to Casey or uh, Professor June after this session, uh, please feel free to send us the questions, and we can always redirect these questions to them and uh, get the questions answered for you. Okay, I'm just uh, doing a quick chat just to make sure that uh, we have covered uh, everything. Okay, I uh, think I've finished uh, the ones on my end. I'm assuming that Pauline, we have covered most of the questions that uh, are posted as well. Um, most of the questions are covered, so some of them that I can reply on hand. So I'm trying to reply them um, in the SIM chat group now. I see. And, uh, some common questions that actually Casey and June did, did actually explain. So I just um, let them know. Okay. Okay, if uh, probably if there are no other questions, I will probably bring this session to a uh, close. Uh, like I said, um, the platform is still open. Uh, Pauline will still be there. Our colleagues will still be there. So like I said, please feel free to uh, bring up any questions that you might think of only after the session to them and we'll definitely get back to you. Okay, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Casey and June and Desmond very much for uh, spending your weekend here with us and also to every one of you for attending this session. Yep, and uh, a good weekend to all of you and uh, definitely we hope to be able to see you and grow in our program. Yep. Uh, Casey and June, you have anything else to add? No. So uh, I just want to thank everybody for their uh, attention and uh, hope to see you in the program. Okay, yeah. The same here. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.